Hello. Thank you so much, Abilene Christian University, for having me to your summit for Social Justice Pathway. I am Jim Buffington with Bridges to Life, and I am glad to uh, be joining all of you for this summit. All right. So again, Jim Buffington, I'm the Chief Operating Officer with Bridges to Life, and we are a restorative justice program. We, um, our key is victim impact. We connect crime victims with offenders in prison. We have a 14 week program. We usually meet one uh, evening a week for two hours. We actually meet in confidential small groups. Typically our groups include two volunteers, one of whom may be a crime victim, as well as 10 offenders. And so in a particular room, you may have five small groups, you may have 10 small groups, but each small group has two volunteers with 10 offenders. During these 14 weeks, we have four crime victim speakers that will come in at the beginning of the evening and share their story, usually the first 30 minutes. And each week of our 14 week program, we have different topics. And so um, one night may be on uh, responsibility, another night is accountability, confession, repentance, forgiveness, etc. But each week of the 14 weeks has a different topic. We are faith-based, however, we are not here to try to convert someone to a particular faith. Uh, all folks of faith or no faiths are welcome to attend. On each night, there are some Bible verses that will refer to the topic. So on the night on accountability, there'll be just a few verses that refer to accountability. We, we, sh we share with all of our participants, you can just read the Bible as a moral story. You don't have to necessarily believe it, but uh, our, we are a faith-based uh, program for restorative justice. To give you an idea of our results, we have been around for 22 years this year. We've had 53,000 men and women graduate from our program. We're now in 14 states and six countries. We've had over 3,000 volunteers. We're a volunteer-led organization. We only have 16 staff members, uh, all of whom are in the state of Texas. Our recidivism rate is really the result we specifically look at. So the national average is anywhere from 30 to 60 percent, but the men and women that actually finish all 14 weeks and fulfill the graduation requirements, the return rate to prison is only 15.6 percent for Bridges to Life graduates. Uh, this is very significant compared again to the national average of 30 to 60 percent. Of that 15.6 percent, only three percent is for a new violent crime. Our program is in prisons, we're in rehab and treatment centers. What we've found that a lot of folks in prison actually landed there due to a um, alcohol or drug addiction. So we've expanded our program to have an addiction program in rehabs, such as the Salvation Army Adult Rehab Centers, as well as prisons in, in 14 different states and six countries. We are in juvenile facilities as well as adult facilities. Our, our, our result at the end, which is actually our mission statement, is we want to help crime victims heal. We want to help uh, offenders rehabilitate, and all of that results in safer communities. There's three different perspectives of our uh, restorative justice program. Again, restorative justice is repairing the harm caused by crime by offenders in prison. And, and so we bring victims and offenders together in, in these small groups. And I'll share some perspectives for you. Um, the, the crime victim perspective, like myself, is it gives us an opportunity every time we tell our story to heal a little more. And so I'll share my story. I um, grew up in San Antonio, Texas. And when I was about 12 years old, my mom was uh, a victim of an armed robbery. Two men held her up at gunpoint. They stole her purse, they stole her jewelry. 
These two men then uh, raped my mother in the back seat of her own car in a parking lot. And then one of them unfortunately took a gun and shot my mom in the face three times and they murdered my mom. They, they left my mom on the backseat floorboard of her car. And I will tell you as a, a boy of 12 years of age, I, I had this fear that attached to me. I couldn't figure out why would anybody want to kill her? Are they going to try to kill me? I, I just didn't understand it. About a year later, my dad was arrested um, for capital murder and criminal solicitation for hiring these two men to kill my mom for life insurance. Uh, he also hired them to kill myself and my two little brothers. And because of a last minute change of plans, only my mother got murdered and my brothers and myself did not. Um, so, so then the immediate uh, reaction for me was betrayal. I, I couldn't believe that my dad wanted to kill me and my brothers and actually killed my mom. And so uh, I, I was right in the middle. I, I'm a victim of crime. I, I'm a, a, a child of a crime victim, but I'm also an offender's child. And so um, it puts me in a unique, a unique position. position. Uh, a, a few years later, my dad was convicted. He was sent to um, the de to death row in Texas in Huntsville. Um, and a few years later, he received a new trial. He um, was given at this point uh, life in prison and, and returned back to the Ellis unit in Huntsville. And, and a few years after that, I actually met with my dad in person and really went through, I would say a victim offender dialogue uh, and actually went through a forgiveness process with my dad. And, and my intention was not to forgive him, to let him off the hook. It was to let me off the hook because what I've noticed is a lot of us crime victims, we, uh, we become bitter, angry, and depressed if we don't forgive our offender. And so I forgave my dad so he didn't control me. I didn't want to be bitter, angry, or depressed. About a year later, after I started meeting with him month by month um, and really restoring a relationship with him, um, he, he actually died in prison. And, and so uh, at the, a, after he died, we were approached by the chaplain and the warden, and I knew something was up because they allowed a memorial service for my dad inside the prison chapel. And prisons don't allow funerals for inmates inside prison. So I knew something was up. And so we, uh, we attended, my, my brothers and, and wives and I, we, we all attended uh, the service. And for three hours, we listened one by one, 300 men in a white prison uniform walk up front, grab a microphone, look us straight in the face and said, I became a Christian because your dad shared his faith with me. And what we learned after hearing 300 men share how my dad had told his story to them is that men can change, women can change. And um, my brothers and I left that, that day at that evening and, and we realized that my brothers had forgiven my dad um, for what he did a after they heard from other people his story of how he had really changed some men's lives. And so soon after that, I, I became a, a volunteer with Bridges to Life as a crime victim speaker. And every time I tell my story, I heal some more. And so the perspective for crime victims is we, we really um, get to, to heal every time we, we share our story. The, the other perspective is the offender perspective. Uh, when I go into prison, first of all, I also get to explain to offenders how I was an offender's kid and, and, and what these men and women in prison uh, actually listen to is how their crime not only affected the victim, but how it affected their family members. And a lot of them hadn't really even thought about it. 
what happens during our 14 week process is these offenders are rehabilitated. Again, the majority, 85% of the men and women that take our program never come back to prison. The third perspective is the volunteer perspective. I've heard this over and over is a lot of our volunteers will say they really got to know the man behind the uniform or, or the man or woman behind the tattoos. And what a lot of volunteers realize is first of all, they get a lot of benefit just helping by just showing up to listen to the, these offenders share their stories. And, and go through our curriculum and learn about taking accountability and responsibility and how to forgive and how to ask for forgiveness. And it really ch just changes the volunteers perspective on men and women that are serving time in prison. The, the end result of our program is that, that lives are impacted at, at the, um, End of the 14 weeks, every participant receives a small group picture. And as you can see, there's a picture of volunteers with their group of uh, offenders that completed the program. And um, it, it's incredible the life change that happens on both the side of the offender as well as the victim and the volunteers. We also have resources, uh, restorative justice resources. First of all, when men and women are, inter are exiting prison, there is a need for housing, employment, transportation, clothing, counseling, et cetera. And so we've actually collaborated with several organizations that will really help them with their support when they get out of prison. And so we've posted those reentry resources on our website. I've included the link here, bridges to life.org, and you can click on the reentry resources. We actually have it listed by geography across the state of Texas. So if somebody's getting uh, released to Dallas or Houston, et cetera, they'll be able to see the particular resources for their area. We also have our Bridges to Life curriculum materials. We have a Restoring Peace book that includes uh, victim stories as well as a study guide that the offenders and the volunteers go through each week. And so those materials are available for order. Um, and lastly, we also have crime victim resources. So in addition to our opportunity for our victims to share their story during the 14 week process, we also have some other resources listed on our website that can assist crime victims. Um, lastly, I always like to say and share what, how can you help? A lot of, a lot of folks will say, what are the support opportunities? Um, First of all, we really appreciate any prayer support. So if you would like to pray for our organization, Bridges to Life, if you'd like to pray for our volunteers as well as our crime victim volunteers and the offender participants in prison, as well as the rehab participants in um, our treatment centers. If you would just pray for us, for all of us that are involved, we would appreciate it. Uh, secondly, you can volunteer with us. You can contact me. There's my email and my phone number for opportunities to get involved in a prison or a rehab center next, you know, near you. Lastly, uh, financial support. If you'd like to donate, you can go to our website, bridgestolife.org. There's a donate now button. Uh, the cost to uh, run our program per graduate is only $200 a graduate. So if you felt led to help support our organization, uh, you, you are welcome to do so, and we would greatly appreciate it. Um, opportunities are really available to, um, again, prayer, volunteer, or financial support. I um, hope that you've uh, learned something about restorative justice. Again, uh, restorative justice is repairing the harm caused by crime, where we connect uh, crime victims to prisons and, and have a 14 week program. If you have any other questions, please feel free to contact me either by email or by phone. And um, again, I just really appreciate this opportunity to participate in the summit. Thank you.